Amen. Let's give God some praise this morning. Come on, let's everyone give God praise this morning. Amen. We thank God for being here this morning. We thank God for his goodness, his mercy, and his outstretched hand. We thank God for those who's with us on live stream. We're coming from the First Church of God in Christ. Amen. Here in Wichita, Kansas, where everybody is somebody. Amen. 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 God is good all the time, and all the time God is good. Also, while it's on my mind, we're saying to those that are here and those that may be listening uh, this morning, I'll try to say it again before we end uh, this morning, but on Friday, we, we will not, let me slow down, we will not have New Year's Eve service this year. That was a hard decision for me uh, to make, but I feel like it's the right thing to do at this time. Amen. I even had a phone call on yesterday uh, from a pastor here in town that wanted to come and be with us in service uh, and he was saying how they enjoy being with us and they were looking forward to it but what we're going to do this year we won't have the new year's eve service but on that friday morning which will be new year's day we will have our early morning manner as we always do but we uh it's going to be a special uh, morning manner amen and so we asking all those who would like to come out to come out and be with us we know we, the capacity is 40, and so you need, if you'd like to come, uh, you need to uh, call Sister Kanitha or text her and let her know that you would like to be here. If there's anyone who wants to come and visit us, if our number is down, you can still come and be with us on that morning. I don't know how our attendance is going to be on that day, amen, but we're going to open it up for those who would like to come and be with us in our morning manner on New Year's uh, morning at 6 a.m. Amen? Amen. Amen. And we just thank God. And, uh, and that's how we're going to celebrate. Brother Fisher will be with us. So we'll have songs of praise and we'll have prayer and we have word of exhortation. And we're just going to go as the Lord lead us. Uh, and we're going to let God have his way on that morning. So please come and be with us. Let's be on time. We want to get in and then uh, get out. Uh, when the Lord release us and go home and be with our families and enjoy them on New Year's uh, Day. And so we're going to have a beautiful New Year's morning, early morning manna, uh, prayer, praise, and exhortation on that morning. We're going to have a great time in the Lord. And I'm looking forward to it. Amen. And, and whatever we do on New Year's Eve night, we can do it that morning. Amen. We can praise and magnify the name of the Lord. I was thinking about last year, how the Lord came in and blessed us. And usually our New Year's Eve service, our, our, our service is pretty much close to being packed uh, out. We don't be packed out, but we be, be close at times. And so it's a wonderful service we have here at First Church. And uh, I'm really looking forward to God doing it again. I believe we're going to be able to do it again, just not this time. Amen. So we believe in God for great and mighty things. We're going to go to uh, Psalms 119. And uh, just go along with me. We're going to read some verses out of Psalms 119. Uh, this is a long uh, uh, book. <clears throat> uh, they don't call it chapters, but it's a long book, Psalms 119. But we won't read all of it because there's a lot of verses in it. But we're just going to pick out as the Lord give us. And so just follow us. In this, the Lord was really uh, put in my spirit this morning before I came the importance of God's word. And God's word is so important. And we've been talking about the beauty of holiness. We enjoyed Sister Saida, who brought the word on, I believe, on last uh, Friday. We thank God for the word that she brought concerning, and she stayed right in the vein concerning the beauty of holiness. And we just, but we know that to live a holy life, we have to have God's word. And his word has to be within us. And God told them in the, in the Old Testament time, they had the written word, they had the commandments, and they had the word of God that God had given them at that time. But they was not able to keep the word. Amen. And so God told them that he was going to write the word in their heart. No more there's on tablet stones, but he's going to put the word in their heart. And that was a prophecy. And he said uh, he's going to put his spirit within them, which he was speaking of at that time, the baptism of the Holy Ghost. The Old Testament uh, times, during that time, the prophets or the people did not have the baptism. Now, the Spirit of the Lord would come upon them. He would overshadow them, and he would speak to them, and he would work 
in their lives. And many did Elijah and Elijah. They did many miracles and, and God worked in their lives. And Isaiah, and I could just begin to call the prophets. God used those men, but the spirit would come up on them. Amen. And they were holy men. Amen. Amen. And they did the best they could, but the word still was not in the, it wasn't in them as it is for us today. But God said that he was going to put the word in them. And so through the spirit of the Lord, once you accept Christ into your life, you ask Christ to come in your life, his spirit comes into your life. And then when you ask him to fill you and to baptize you with his spirit, he gives you an overflow of his spirit. And his spirit dwells within you. And that word is in you. And as you begin to read and study God's word and get into God's word, that word is in your heart. And so when things come into your life, Whatever those things may be, and it's not always sin, but whatever come in your life, there's a word, there's an answer for that situation. Now, many people will say, oh, you can't find that in the word. Yes, you can find whatever you need, you can find it in God's word. Now, some things come under a heading, and so you may not, just like uh, there's certain things that the word of God tells us uh, uh, not to put, uh, defile our temple, our body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, and we're not to put nothing in it that defile it. So, therefore, that covers a, that co that covers a lot. Anything that will defile you, or cause you to be uncleansed, or is not healthy for you, that comes under that heading. Don't put that in your temple. Amen. So, I don't have to give you every little detail. You know what defiles you if you're honest. Many times we will not be honest. We have to be honest. Hallelujah. But if we're honest with ourselves. Will this defile me? Will this, will, will this defile my mind? Will this defile my, uh, 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 my organs? Would, will this defile anything in me? Will this, what I'm getting ready to speak, will that defile me? If the answer is yes, then don't do it. Amen? And so everything we need, we can find it in the word of God. And with saying that, look at this. Look at God's word. That's how quick his word works. Look at Psalms 119 in the first verse. Blessed are the undefiled in the way who walk in the law of the Lord. See, we're blessed when we, when we keep things out of us that we know that will defile us. And the Bible said we're blessed. So anything that defiles us, we're not to do it because if we do it, then we're not going to be holy. And what God has cleansed, because when you come to Christ, he cleanses you. He washes you. He makes you complete. Then you're not to put nothing in your temple or in your mind that's going to defile you. Hallelujah. You don't want to hear nothing that's going to defile you. You don't want to see nothing that's going to defile you. Hallelujah. You want to keep yourself clean. You want to keep yourself pure. Hallelujah. But the only way you can do that is you have to walk in the law of the Lord. You have to walk in God's word. Whatever God's word have said, that's what we have to do. Amen. Listen to the second verse. Blessed are they that keep his testimonies and that seek him with the whole heart. There it is right there. We have to do it with our whole heart, not partially, uh-uh, but with your whole heart, Lord, I serve you. I give my heart, soul, mind, body, and spirit. I give all, everything I have to you, even my strength. The Bible says serving with all of your might. Everything that I have within me, Lord, I give it to you. I keep your testimonies. I keep your statutes. I keep your commandments. Now, we will not read all of Psalms 119, but you're going to hear him say commandments. You're going to hear him say statutes. And you're going to hear him say laws. And you're going to hear him say testimonies. So the words go back and forth. But to keep that which God has given us in our heart, that we may please him. They also do no iniquity. They walk in his ways. We don't do those things, iniquity, those hidden things. Those things that nobody know about. We want to keep all of that out of our heart. Malice, jealousy, speaking guile, things that, that are deceitful. Hallelujah. We want to keep all of that out of us so we can be holy. Hallelujah. That we can be pure. 
that we can be the men and the women that the Lord is calling for. For first, thou hast commanded us to keep thy precepts diligently, carefully. Lord, I want to be so careful. The Bible even tells us that we want you to be careful for nothing. When everything is well, still be careful. When you don't see nothing, everything is, I mean, everything you see is fine, still be careful. When nothing is going on in your life but that which is right, still be careful. Don't get caught up in self-righteousness and think it's you. Still be careful. When everything is well, still be careful. Still be prayerful. Still be watchful. Still be alert. Enjoy your life, but never get so comfortable that you take your eyes off from the enemy, the enemy, the devil, and the enemy of your flesh. We are our worst enemy. Always stay conscious of God's word. In all of our ways, we acknowledge him, for he promised to direct our path. Do nothing without him. Christ said, without the Father, I can do nothing. I depend totally upon the Father. Hallelujah. So always be careful. That don't mean to be on pins and needles, but just to be watchful, to be alert. Jesus said, watch and pray that you enter not into temptation. God don't want us to walk on pins and needles. Oh, I can't do this. I can't do that. But just be careful. Hallelujah. Stay in God's word. Stay watchful. Stay alert. Don't be like the foolish versions, the five foolish versions. There was 10, there was five wise, and there was five foolish. Hallelujah. Don't be slumber and sleeping when you should be awoke. Hallelujah. Take care of everything that needs to be taken care of. Don't be lazy. Hallelujah. <laughs> the Bible said don't, don't be lazy. Don't be slowful. The Bible said consider the ant. Watch them. Hallelujah. The Bible said you can learn from the ant. Hallelujah. While all the other instead the butterflies and all the other, they flying around and they just free and everything is just wonderful and beautiful during the summertime. But that ant during that time, he's storing up. That's what the Bible said because winter is coming. And guess what? When winter comes, the ant can survive. They don't even have to come out of their hole. Hallelujah. Because they have stored up food. Hallelujah. Praise God. So whatever you need is in God's word. But you have to read his word diligently and be careful. Hallelujah. Be conscious. Be watchful. Oh, hallelujah. Be sensitive to the word of God. Hallelujah. You get ready to do something or get ready to go somewhere, whatever, and God's word will come to you. Whatever you need him to say, whatever you need him to do, his word will speak to you. Hallelujah. So follow the word of God. Be obedient to his word. Hallelujah. And you'll be blessed. Oh, I love this. Oh, that thou may, oh, that my ways were directed to keep thy statutes. That's the fifth verse. Uh, let's go to the seventh verse. I will praise thee with uprightness of heart. When shall I have learned thy righteous judgments? God will teach us that which is righteous. Hallelujah. And if we do it God's way, then he won't have to judge us. Hallelujah. And then when he do judge us, it'd be, it be righteous. God won't have to uh, chastise us. Now, he will chastise us. Those he loves, he'll chastise. Hallelujah. But if you keep his word, he don't have to chastise you. Hallelujah. He loves you so much that he will, but he don't have to chastise you. Our mothers used to tell us, if you just do what I tell you to do, you won't have to get that whooping. You don't have to get that punishment. You don't have to go through that trial. We have enough trials without putting ourselves through trials. Hallelujah. We have enough things in life. Life brings its own situations and problems without us adding more to it. Hallelujah. But if we won't obey God, then God will allow these things, or these things will come upon us. Hallelujah. But in it, he will chastise. He will love us back to him. But we, we don't have to go through all of that if we would just obey the word of God. Let's go to the ninth verse. We're skipping. How do I do this? How do I do this? How do I keep God's word? How do I obey God's word? This is, here it is. Wherewith shall a young man cleanse his ways? By taking heed thereto according to thy word. That's how you do it. Take heed. Listen. And then after you listen, do it. God was saying in prayer this morning, listen, hear, listen, hear. 
The first thing he said to Israel before he gave the commandment, the commandments, he said, Hear, O Israel. Hear, before you can do the commandments, you got the first hear. And to hear means to listen to what I'm saying, what I'm telling you to do. And it's so funny when God told Israel that to hear him before he gave the commandment. Then you read, you go from chapter to chapter in the Bible, from book to book in the Bible. And then you get to Revelation. And John the, apostle, John, the disciple of Christ, as he began to write to the churches of Revelation, he said, hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Pay attention to what God is saying to the church. God is, out of all the books of the Bible, he's still telling his people to do what? Hear. Listen. And then after you do that, then do it. Hallelujah. Because the Bible said that we're here is only we're deceiving ourselves. So don't stop at the just the hearing, just the listening, but do it. Walk it. Live it. Yay. Then you get the results. You get the fruit. Hallelujah. You get the benefits. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. It's funny how sometimes we can be in service and have a great time. And you know you have all kind of people in your services. So you have some that they will leave the service and say, oh, we had a time today. Oh, the Lord came in and he blessed today. Oh, the Lord came in and he moved today. Oh, the minister or missionary or whoever spoke, they spoke today. Oh, God spoke to us today. And then somebody else go out of the same service. The same service, the same Sunday, heard the same message. And someone asked him, how was church today? Oh, it was okay. What did the preacher preach? He didn't say much enough. I ain't getting nothing out of it. What's going on there? What's going on there? What's going on there? That one was listening. That one was tuned in. That one was sensitive to what the Spirit was saying. And they was being filled and they was eating. They were digesting the word. They weren't just chewing up on the word. They was chewing it. Mm, mm, that's good. Mm, no taste to see the Lord good. Blessed the man that trusts him. Ooh, give me some more word. They listen and they don't want, I know myself, I don't want people talking to me in church. Sometimes people think I'm rude or whatever. I don't, I'll talk to you before, but I don't want to talk in church. I really don't. You may see me sometimes talking to someone, someone talking to me, but it's not, it's nothing I really like to do. I want to hear what's being said. Not just when the person get up to speak, throughout the service. Back in the day when we had testimony, sir, we still do it here at first church at times, but they had testimony, sir. Hear, listen to the testimonies that are given. You're going through a trial, you're going through a temptation, you're going through something in life, and that person has the testimony that you need to strengthen you, to build you up, to help you to overcome, but you didn't hear it. Hallelujah. Someone else heard it, but you didn't hear it, and you needed to hear what God was saying. You've been seeking him, and Lord, give me a word, and it came in the testimony, and you missed it. Sometimes it came in the prayer, and you missed it. Hallelujah. So listen to God's word. The Bible says, keep your feet when you come to the house of God. Hallelujah. And hear what the Lord is saying. And not just in the house of God. Even when my friends and Brother Taiwan, sometimes he shares with me in different ones, I try to listen. To hear what's being said. Well, you're the pastor. You're the pastor. You don't have to listen. You're the pastor. You're the one who give it out. No. The pastor has to listen. He has to hear. The Bible says even a child shall lead them. Hallelujah. So when God's speaking his word, whoever he's speaking it through, hear the word of God. You may be what they're saying. You not may. You need that. You need that word. That word can be will protect you, will keep you, will strengthen you, will hold you up. So where shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed to God's word. Take heed to his word. Do the word of God. Let's go to the 11th verse. Well, no, no, 10th verse. My whole heart have I sought thee. There it is again. He repeats it over and over. My whole heart, I'm seeking you. Sought, I'm seeking you, Lord. I'm seeking you with my whole heart. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added. Many times we ask him, God, to do this, do that for us. He already told us how to receive those things. I want to call it a name, but I won't do it. Hallelujah. God has already told us what to do. Seek him. Seek him first. Read Matthew, the fifth chapter. No, 
not fifth chapter. Read Matthew the sixth chapter. Read all of it. 6.33 says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God, and his right, and all these things shall be added. But read the whole thing. They were concerned about clothing. They were concerned about where are we going to live. They were concerned about what food are we going to eat. So Jesus told them, don't be concerned about all of that. Those things are necessary. Those things are needs. Those things are wants. Hallelujah. But he said, don't worry about those things. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Get in your word and find out what the kingdom of God is. It's not meat and drink. <laughs> it's not the material things. It's not the things that you see with your natural eyes. Hallelujah. The kingdom of God is not meat and drink. And when he said meat and drink, it's not the material things. But it's joy, peace, hallelujah, in the Holy Ghost. Love, in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. The kingdom of God is th the things that are eternal, not temporal. Whatever's temporal, it's going to pass away. Hallelujah. What do a man, what, what, do, what, do, what do it a profit man to gain this whole world? And lose his soul. It's not your possessions. And we enjoy our possessions. I'm not going to sit there and lie. I enjoy my home. I enjoy my car. But that's not where it's at. That's not where it's at. Some of us have new cars. That's beautiful. Nothing wrong with that. But that's not where it's at. You can drive right out there. Leave right today. We're not speaking it. You can leave this place. And a can be hit. Car total out. Hallelujah. Someone said, when I got insurance, I'll get me another one. Hallelujah. Oh, that, okay, okay. But things can hit you in life that you can't recover. Hallelujah. You can't recover it if your life is gone. Uh-huh. You got the money, you got the money. You got the insurance, you got everything. But if your life is taken, that won't help you. Hallelujah. So it's God. You look to him. He's the author. He's the finisher of our faith. He's the one who takes care of us. He's the one who keeps us from the wrecks. Hallelujah. He keeps us because he sees before we see. He knows what we don't know. He gives you to look at the right time, and there that car is. Hallelujah. And there's times I've had accidents, and they happened so quick, I didn't even know what happened, and I was able to walk out of them. Hallelujah. Who did it? God. Who kept you? God. Who protected you? God. Hallelujah. So he said, don't worry about those things. Hallelujah. He said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his right and all these things. Whatever you desire, whatever you want, just seek me and whatever's for you, it will come. I will bless you with it. Hallelujah. Sometimes he just put it in your lap. Other times he give you the strength to go and do what you need to do. I'm going to work a lot of overtime. You can't do that without God's strength. If he don't give you the strength to do it, you can't do it. So it still comes from God. He's the one who enables you. Amen. I'm just going to go to work. He's the one who gives you the job. You can walk in your job and everything is fine. Everything is well. And they call you to the office. You've done everything you're supposed to do. <laughs> You've been there for 20 years. I don't have nothing to worry about. I've been here a long time. And they tell you, we're going to lay you off. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. What I'm going to do now? God. He took care of you before. He'll take care of you doing, doing, and he'll take care of you after. Seek him. Seek him. Keep him first. Don't put other things before him. Keep him first. And I promise you, promise you, God will take care of you. So give, search, him, search and seek him. Love him with your, own, with your whole heart. Oh, let me not wander from thy commandments. Here's the, here's the 11th verse, and we're going to bring it to a close. Thy word have I hidden in my heart that I might not sin against thee. We must hide God's word in our heart. Put God's word in your heart. Then he, and he said that I, that I might not. Because why did he say might not? Because you still have a choice. It's a decision you have to make. Many times when we don't keep God's word, it's not because we don't know it. It's not because the Holy Ghost is not doing what, he's, what he does. 
Amen. And you have many people who came to me and they say, well, this one has the Holy Ghost and that one has the Holy Ghost. This one has the Holy Ghost. This one said they have the Spirit and I don't see them doing it because it's a choice. That don't mean they don't have it. That don't mean that he's not working. That don't mean that he's not doing what he does. The Bible says the Holy Ghost will teach us. He will guide us. He will uh, convict us. Read concerning the baptism of the Holy Ghost and all that comes with it. And he will do everything that the Bible says the Holy Ghost will do. He will do it. But we have to allow. He will comfort us. But you have to allow the, lo the Lord to comfort you. We, sometimes we have in our mind, I'm going to stay upset. I'm going to worry. I'm going to have my attitude. Well, the Holy Ghost is not going to, he's not going to force you. He's not going to make you. He's a gentleman. Hallelujah. He won't force himself upon you. Hallelujah. You have to allow him. So he said that I might not, thy word have I hidden, that I might not sin against you. So we don't have to sin. We can live a holy life. We can live a life, a beautiful life in him. It's beautiful. Living safe is beautiful. Only days I don't really enjoy my, uh, my walk is because I myself want to do it my way. Long as I yield to him, long as I just let him do what he does, long as I don't resist, hallelujah, long as I keep the flesh under subjection, long as I keep the flesh dead. Now, all of this, all of this is something we have to do. But if we just let him not fight him, but let him do what he does. You'll find out that his yoke is easy. Mm -hmm. And his burden is light. I had to learn. Let me be honest who I'm talking to today. I had to learn. It was hard. And when I first got saved, there was times that I felt like, oh, this is so hard. This is so hard. But as you learn of him, as you begin to not resist and just let him do what he does. Now, you will have a burden, but he said, he'll make it light. You will, he said, and he said, my yoke is easy. You have a yoke, but he said, I'll make your yoke easy. But you have to allow him to do it in you. That's why Paul said, there's no more I, but it's the Christ that lives what? In me. It's the word that lives in me. The word of God, the Bible said, when the enemy come in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard. The Holy Ghost will stand up in you. He will do whatever you need the Holy Ghost to do. He will do it. Sometimes when they come to try to tempt you to do things, the Holy Ghost in you say, no, no, thank you. That ain't you. That's the spirit in you. Hallelujah. Standing up in you saying no. When you walking towards something and you find yourself turning and going the way the Lord said, that's not you. That's him. But you just let him steer you. Let him guide you. Let him lead you. Let him hold you up. Let him keep you. Woo! Let him strengthen you. Let him do it. Hallelujah. God's word. His word is living. It's not dead. His word is living. Jesus came. He was the living word. and He walked it among us. He lived it among us. He showed us how to walk a holy life. How to live a holy life. And the Lord said, the Bible said he did it without, without sin. There was no sin in him. You couldn't, the Bible said you couldn't even find no guile, which means deceit. You couldn't even find no deceit in him. He was purely holy and walked holy before the Father. He walked holy before those who seen him. Hallelujah. And he let us know that you can do it too. You can't do it of yourself. You can do it in him. And if you have him, you have his word because he is the word. Hallelujah. Read John. St. John, the first chapter. He's the word. Hallelujah. And so we have to let that word get down in us and put that word in us and that word will come up out of us. He said, if you believe in me, I'm trying to end. If you believe in me, as the scriptures have said, whatever the scriptures said about Jesus, that's what you need to know. If you believe this, he said, out of your belly, out of your innermost being shall flow rivers of living water. They were just the flow, the word of God would just flow out of you. You won't have to make it, it just come up out of you. Whatever word you need for whatever situation it may be, the word just comes up. 
Hallelujah. Whatever it is. If you didn't want, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Hallelujah. If you need to be comforted, he will comfort you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. I'll be with you even to the ends of the world. Hallelujah. Oh, God, what I'm going to do, what I'm going to do. Life is not looking good. Lord, I'm getting ready to clock out of here. Oh, God, what I'm going to do. Oh, he said, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. I go to a prayer place for you that where I am, there ye may be also. You have nothing to worry about. Hallelujah. You're going to transition out of this world into my kingdom to be with me, to be absent from the body, and to be present with the Lord. Hallelujah. Whatever words you need at the time you need it, God will give it to you. It will come up out of you like rivers of living water, whatever that word is that you need. It will come up out of you, but you have to let that word get down in you. So, Lord, we just thank you for your many blessings. Lord, I could go on and on concerning your word. Oh, God, but time would not allow me, God. But we just thank you for the word you've given us on today. Oh, God, and you, gave, you give us a word each day. That's why you said daily bread. Hallelujah. We must get our daily bread every day, God, because we can't take in all of your word in one day, oh God. Hallelujah. It's too much of it, oh God. But each day we can take in your word, and you'll give us the word that we need for that particular day, God. What I needed yesterday, I may not need today, God. What, I, what you give me tomorrow, hallelujah, be for tomorrow, God. But Lord, you said you give us the daily bread that we need for the particular day that we're in. So God, we thank you for your word. And Lord, I ask today that you cleanse me in your word that you wash me in your word, that you make me whole in your word, that I may live by your word, that I may be holy through your word. Hallelujah! Bless your name, Jesus. Oh, Lord, and I realize I can only do it through your word. So wash me, cleanse me, and make me whole. Make me complete in you. Forgive me of any sins. Create in me a clean heart. Renew in me a right spirit. Oh, God, help me to have the right attitude in the name of Jesus. Whatever I've done, Lord, forgive me of all of my sins that I may continue to walk with you and be the son, oh, that you call me to be. Oh, God, in the name of Jesus, the daughters and sons or whoever you may be, you can be what you, God has called for you to be if you will walk and live in his word. So, Lord, we thank you and we praise you and we magnify you for your word. Where we shall a young man, young woman, cleanse their ways by taking heed to your word. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God bless you. God keep you as you walk in his word. And we want to say one more time for those who may not heard in the beginning, uh, we will not have New Year's Eve service on New Year's Eve night, on Thursday night. But we will have early morning manna. At 6 a.m., amen, and that will be a special morning manner, and we're asking those who would like to be with us to let Sister Kanitha know, amen, praise God by text or by calling her, and then uh, if we have any visitors that would like to come, you're welcome as long as our church is not full, amen, and so we ask that you come and be with us. We own, The capacity is only 40 that we can have inside our building, but we ask that you come and be with us if you can, if you like to come and celebrate the New Year's with us on New Year's morning at 6 a.m. God bless you and God keep you in his love.